Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Jordan Mate Market Site is JJ Kinahan. He's the chief market strategist over at TD Ameritrade. And we're here to review monthly retail investor trading trends for the month of July. And this is part of the Investor Movement Index over at TD Ameritrade, or what we call the IMX, where they look at the aggregate, the 11.5 million trading accounts available there and what the trends are telling them in terms of retail traders. JJ, as always, thank you for joining always us. Always great to be here. At Thanks. Market Site. Now, clients apparently maintained overall exposure to the equity markets in July. Yeah, they did. So, very interesting in that, you know, as you and I have talked about, uh, every month so far this year. At the beginning of the year, they deleveraged a little bit, then they started to leverage back up, now a little bit flat. And I think it comes down to what you're seeing in the market, and that is this tug of war between the fact that it was an amazing, or has been an amazing earnings season. You know, 80% of the companies reporting in the S&P 500, 78% beat on top, 72 on the bottom, and then all the swirl that's around about tariffs and everything else. So I think people, uh, you know, if you look at the report, going with sort of the names they know, still going with some yield names, AT&T and Ford, which might be, you know, after Ford particularly got beaten up in uh, July, and then selling some names that did really well in earnings, you know, a Gilead, uh, Sciences, et cetera. Right. So it's really interesting. So it looks like they point. use their earnings cycle to, um, for their buy and sell motivations for, yeah, for July. To, is really to, to sort of rebalance their portfolios overall, Jill, I would say. All right. Now let's talk about your outlook going into September, which will be the last month of the third quarter. Do you think we're going to see more of the same where traders are going to be focused on macro headlines in the absence of earnings as we wind down? A absolutely. And I think you bring up the great point. We saw this the last time we had this break between earnings. It's day-to-day -day trade. Uh, this for, for the investors and so many of them watching your show who are looking longer term, this really is about picking out your stocks and sort of staying with the companies, not getting influenced by one little headline. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that happens to people too often. And for those who are more toward the trading bent, it's a great opportunity exactly. because we're going to move back and forth. What you have to be careful of in these times, though, is your size. Because we move very quickly, you might want to scale back your size a little bit. Use movement as your friend rather than your enemy. So if you have a plan, thinking about average pricing in and out rather than... <laughs> It has to hit at this price. Are you surprised to see just how well markets are digesting the trade headlines? Is it, is it a function of there's just so many of them out there that it's largely ignored? I don't want to say ignored, but... Well, I think it's the biggest thing, and you and I have talked about this in the mm -hmm. past, earnings drive markets. Right. Earnings have been very good. The headlines, you can't measure. You can't trade on it necessarily. So I think people are being intelligent on trading what they can see and what they know. And for all the bad headlines we see, Jill, you know, you look at the NDX, you look at the Russell, you look at the S&P 500, we're 1% to 2% off all-time highs in all these. So what I think investors are being wise and saying, okay, that's interesting, but let's stick with the things that are working. I think also if you look at the volatility markets as well, being as depressed as they are, that also helps to lend to why you're seeing the index is higher um, because it just seems as if um, the traders aren't approaching it as a volatile market. Uh, absolutely, and I think you, you, you look at the volatility products, and what I would tell you is if they start to leverage up, take that as uh, uh, heed the warning, so mm -hmm. to speak. The other thing is the bond market's been in a tight range. Again, heed the warning if bonds themselves start going up pretty good and yields going down. But we're not necessarily seeing that. So as much as many of the cable ne news networks are on 24 hours a day and it's breaking news every 10 minutes, the reality is the market's shrugging off a lot of this until they have something that they can actually trade on that's measurable. So that you know, clients uh, such as ours are going with the Netflix, the Amazons of the world. They're doing well. Microsoft, these stocks that, you know, I believe all NASDAQ stocks, yes, actually, all NASDAQ stocks. That, that, that are doing well in the you know, tech sector, and they believe in them longer term. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us at Market Site, as always. Always a pleasure, Jill. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.